Hey there, Sugar Free, 40 Free Sisters. And those of you who are journey journeying with us on this fasting and feasting journey, we are currently going through the book, The 40 Day Sugar Fast by Wendy Speak. And we are now on day eight. And I'm here with um, the inspirational post. And I'm just sharing some of the things that I glean, I'm gleaning from as I grow through this book, like we shared yesterday. I'm not just doing this to, to as something else on my to-do list or to just get through it um, or to go through it just to get through it. I want to grow through it. So I'm just here show, sharing some gleaning from my growing um, and how this book is helping me day to day as I engage in it and I take the time to engage in the book. Um, we are on day eight of the journey and day eight is Candy Canes and Crutches. And I first saw that title, I'm like, what this going to be about? Like, yeah, I was interested. So let's jump in. Psalm 54 and 4 is our verse today. Um, and I read it from a couple of different translations, but I want to share it from the Passion Translation because that's, that's the one that registered with me the most. So I'm going to share it from there. It says, but the Lord God has become my divine helper. Ooh. That right there is enough to just send you send you right on off but the lord god has become my divine helper he leans into my heart he leans into my heart and lays his hands upon me can we can we just see la there for just just can we just see la there and take that in just take in his word the Lord God has become my divine helper. He, the God who knows everything about me, the God who sees everything I do, hears everything I do, he leans into my heart and lays his hands upon me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Talk about a word. Um, Wendy starts out this day sharing um, a memory of her in, in high school and about this atheist guy who um, had made this statement about Christians are weak people um, and we were in need of a crutch. And he went on to uh, say that Jesus, uh, or he accused Jesus of of being our crutch she said jesus he accused is the crutch you lean on to get you through this life and i don't know listen i'm like sir if if that qualifies me as weak then call me weak my name my name is weak because jesus is our crutch jesus is our crutch he's absolutely right we need Jesus. I need Jesus. So if 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 that qualifies me as weak, baby, sign me up. Sign me up. Because the word of God says that uh, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. So if I'm going to experience his strength over and over and over again, hello, my name is weak. <laughs> yes, my name is weak. Um, but Jesus as a crutch, and I know y'all see these crutches over here, but we gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Um, I wrote down in my journal to uphold or sustain, uphold or sustain, um, and just was given some thought to, you know, what, what we use crutches for, like, cause we're not walking around every day with these type of crutches. You know, but um, to see Jesus as a crutch or Christ as my crutch, as my support, he who sustains me, he, he who holds me up. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, um, a crutch. I looked up crutch and uh, one of the definitions outside of supporting and sustaining that somebody uses crutches to support or to sustain or to sustain. Um, another definition was 
something on which one depends often and excessively. It said something, but in my mind, I replaced that with someone on which one depends often and excessively. And, and Christ as a crutch to me, he is that someone that I depend on often and excessively often and excessively him him as a crutch um i i was down in my closet downstairs getting something out my closet and i looked up and i saw two sets of these i just pulled out one set but i saw two sets of these crutches and they were thrown in the back of the closet and it gave me i started reflecting on how the crutches got there and why now they were in the back of, a, of, of our closet. So my husband um, was playing basketball a few months ago and he got hurt. Um, had to go to the hospital. That night they sent him home with a set of crutches um, to use to take the weight or the pressure off of his leg, you know, to, to take all of that pressure off so that whatever he hurt could heal. Um, and I noticed like my husband, he would he used the crutches maybe the first day, maybe the second day. But once that leg started feeling better and, and he could put some pressure on it, those crutches were just thrown right in that closet downstairs. A couple of months later, um, he was back in the hospital, this time an injury on the other leg. Um, and he was sent home with another set of crutches. And I'm like, why y'all keep why you why you keep letting them charge our insurance and get these crutches? Cause you already had some crutches at home. Um, but he came with another set of crutches, and I watched him do the same thing with with the second set of crutches. He used it for a couple of days, and as soon as that leg started feeling better, crutches was in the back of the closet. And I, I thought about how sometimes that happens with us, um, and how Jesus becomes the what we need, who we need, um, and, and the crutch for us. But when things get better, how we sometimes will put him in the back of the closet. We good now, God. We good now, Jesus. Um, you know, we can handle it from here. So we put him in the back of the closet until something else happens and I gotta go back and now I need my crutches again. And then one or two days later, I'm starting to feel better, so I throw him back in the back of the, of, of the closet. Um, Jesus Christ is our constant crutch, and he wants to sustain us. He wants to uphold us. He wants to take the pressures off of us, and we can put all of our weight on him. I, When I brought these uh, crutches up here, I, I stood in this mirror that's here in front of me, and I put my weight on the crutches, and um, the crutches was holding all of my weight to where I couldn't feel anything on me because I was putting my weight on the crutches, and I was just thinking about how that's that's exactly what Christ is to us. I can put my weight on him. I can put my all the pressure. I can he can carry the pressure. He can carry the weight. Um so I just kind of physically saw those crutches today and then today was candy canes and crutches and I'm like, "Hmm." So it made me think. I just went off in a tangent. I hope you understood what I was saying, but um, I also wrote in here, Wendy said something in the book that um, definitely arrested my attention. She said, God never intended for sugar to sustain us. He never intended for sugar to sustain us. And I keep saying this over and over is that sugar may not be your stronghold. It might be something else. Um, as a matter of fact, let that be one of our journal questions today, because a lot of people I've heard um, share with me, a couple of people have said, well, Shantae, I'm not doing a sugar fast because sugar isn't, um, I don't really have an issue with sugar. Um, but I keep trying to tell them that this thing is so much greater than sugar. You can replace sugar with whatever that stronghold is for you. Maybe it's social media. And I'm, this is just a plug next year. 
next year um, at the onset of the year, we're going through, we're going to have our second book club or another book club. Um, and um, we're going through the 40 day social media fast. You're going to want to catch us there. I'll be live in my uh, on our YouTube channel um, with that when we do go there. But social media, it might be social media for you. I wrote this down in my, in my journal. What is your stronghold or addiction? Because, because for some of us, it may not be sugar. What's your crutch? What is, what is your crutch? It might be TV. It might be social media. It might be people pleasing. It might be you uh, trying to be in control or always wanting to be in control. It might be shopping. It might be video games. Um, it might be other people. It might be other people. Other people might be might be your crutch where you depend on hearing God always through somebody else. Uh, you depend on other people to get a prayer through for you. You depend on other people to um, help you to understand the word. You depend on other people. Like you look to other people as if you aren't important to God, as if you aren't significant, as if your voice doesn't have value. So your stronghold might not be sugar. You might need to do a people fast, a 40 day people fast, a 40 day people fast of I'm I'm not going to be running to nobody else to get revelation, but I'm going to sit myself down for 40 days with my Bible, my journal, um, a pen, and I'm going to carve out 20, 15 minutes, 30 minutes a day to just sit, read, and wait on the revelation that Holy Spirit will speak to me because he wants to speak to you too. So you might need to replace this while we're going through this book. You can replace it with anything. You can take sugar out and replace it with whatever your stronghold would be or whatever your crutch may be or whatever your candy cane may be um, that you run to before you run to Christ. And do 40 days of that. Might be 40 days of TV fast. I'm just trying to help you out to show you that this ain't just about sugar. Because sugar ain't ain't always my thing. Food have been. Several things are. And, and those things are what I'm walking away from. So I might go back through this or go through it and, and replace it with something else. People pleasing. Uh, the 40 day uh, people pleasing fast. I'm getting out of here with people pleasing. Being in control, the 40 day shopping fast. I ain't shopping. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to a budget for 40 days. I don't know. Whatever it is for you, replace that and, and make this something that you can move in. Okay. So, um, I forgot what I was about to say. She said, oh yeah. She said, God never intended for sugar su to sustain you. So whatever your stronghold is, God never um, intended for other people, relying on other people, uh, to hear God through, uh, to sustain you. God never intended for TV or social media to sustain you. Whatever that stronghold is, he never intended for that stronghold to sustain you. There is only one who sustains and his name is Jesus. Um, before I get to our journal prompt questions, um, I also went and I started messing with, with, um, I went and I found a picture of a candy cane and I found a picture of a shepherd's staff. I know, I don't know if you can see that, but I found that and I started just looking into that, like, um, and I found this cute little graphic or it was an article, it was an article about the candy cane gospel. And so they they likened the candy cane to the shepherd's staff and um, likened it to the gospel. And I didn't get to do a whole lot of research on this, so don't take me at my word, do your own research. Um, but they were saying that the candy cane is symbolic of, you know, the, the, the gospel. Um, and this little, little diagram that I found was very, very, um, very interesting. It said that the candy cane shape, the J shape, uh, the letter J 
Jesus Christ is the promised Savior. So when you see the candy cane and that J, you think of Jesus Christ, the Savior. It says that um, the shape of it, the, the whole shape of the candy cane is that of a shepherd's staff. Jesus is the good shepherd and his sheep hear and follow his voice. Then it went on to talk about the colors of the candy cane, which is the red stripes and the white stripes, um, or the white, red stripes and the white candy. It said that the white candy is our sin, is our sins were washed away by the sacrifice of the sinless Savior. You see why he a crutch? He yeah, he our crutch. Um, and then the red stripes were Christ's blood the Christ blood that was shed for us on the cross. So um, it likened it to a shepherd's staff. Um, and I did just a quick little research on the, the shepherd's staff. And it says that the shepherd's staff is a unique instrument used totally for the care and management of sheep. The symbol represents the concern and compassion that a shepherd has for his sheep. And you know, um, in, in the word, we're likened to sheep and Jesus is our good shepherd and says that this, this staff that he carries is for his care and his, uh, his concern, his compassion, and his care, uh, that the, that the shepherd has for his sheep, for us. Um, there's a scripture in Psalm, I think, uh, 23, it's, it talks about thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Um, it says that the rod, which is different from the staff, um, the rod is said to convey the concept of authority, power, discipline, and defense of the sheep. So our, our Christ, our good shepherd, he fights for us. He defends us. He disciplines us. He corrects us. He is the authoritative figure with power who covers us and keeps us. So that's the rod. It says that the staff represents all that is long suffering and kind. Um, it's also said that the staff is used in drawing the sheep together into an intimate relationship. That blessed me that he uses his staff to draw the sheep together in, a, in, in an intimate relationship. First with him, with him and with one another. You see the cross, you see the cross, you see the cross. Um, and it's also used to guide sheep through a new gate or along a dangerous and difficult route. Um, so he, the staff is used to guide us, to guide us into new spaces and new places and new gates and new open doors. And also to guide us along dangerous or difficult routes. Christ is my crutch. Christ is my crutch. I claim him as my crutch. Weak. My name is weak and I claim him as my crutch. Um, and so that was just some of the things that I, I gleaned um, from, from today's devotional. Um, she said here, in contrast, in contrast to a candy cane or sugar, um, in contrast to that uh, sugar it says that she says that sugar doesn't give a rip about your joy, your health, your stress, your family, your ability to bear the fruit of God's spirit in your life or your emotional well-being. Sugar don't care about us. Sugar don't care about us. That stronghold, that thing that you run to more than you run to Christ, don't care about you. It don't care about us. So um, another thing I wanted to pull out here was a couple more sentences that she, that she lifted up. Because Jesus sacrificed his life. He alone is able to sustain, save and sustain ours. And Jesus is the true and faithful lover and sustainer of our soul. He is the true and faithful lover and sustainer of our souls. Um, that's all I got today. I'm not going to draw this out. I wish I had took more notes because I had a better flow in my head. But when I get in front of this camera, I always kind of freeze up. But we doing this, y'all. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, 
I'm leaning on you today. As I lean into your word, you and you alone are able to make me, make me able-bodied. You can carry my burdens because you care for me. You are able to sustain my life because you gave yours. No one else, no one else, no one else and nothing else was created to carry my weight. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. He can carry our weight. Listen, I'll boast about it. I'll boast about it as long as I live. Jesus is my crutch. And if that qualifies me as weak, then my name is weak. Candy canes and crutches. Happy day eight.